Neiman Hao. I'm going to show about pop-up dictionaries you can add to your internet browser to make it easier to just hover and check the meaning and the sound of Chinese characters that you encounter online. There are two that I know about. I use Zhongwen, um, and it gives you a little screen like this where you hover over a word and it will pop up with the meaning of the word and characters within the word so you can think it through. This is better than using Google Translate to me because Google Translate will just give you one estimate based on the whole chunk and it often gets Chinese and English not great. So this gives you the option to use your own smarts and to say hmm, that looks like the right meaning in this context of this sentence that I almost totally understood just really need a reminder about that word or two. Um, so Jung Wen you can put on and it'll do that. It'll show you pinyin and English meaning. There's another called Para Para Chinese Pop-Up Dictionary that works in a very similar way. I noticed in their pop-ups they also have the more commonly used in Taiwan and some overseas Chinese communities. It's a different kind of phonetic guide to, to tell us how the words sound. Um, so that's what those are over there. But they also have a pinyin option. So it can pop up with pinyin. I think they might even use the same dictionary, which is the one I'm going to show you in a little bit from here, MDBG. I'll go, come back to that later. So you add it, you get it up here in your, uh, I don't even know what to call that line anymore, um, but you can hover and see. That says Zhongwen Chinese Pop-Up Dictionary. I'll turn it on. I usually keep it off because it can interfere with my reading if I don't want it, so I only turn it on if I need it. So here's a read-along video. In the video itself, you can't use it. It's not going to work. But I've been adding the whole transcript down at the bottom underneath in the information window, and there it's helpful. I don't think you can add these pop-up dictionaries on a phone. I think you need to be on a computer, but I'm not totally sure. So what I can do now that I have it it's installed and it's on. I can go into the transcript and just hover over words that I'm unsure of and I'll see the pinyin and meanings. So it's nice. It gives you all the possible ones. You use the context and think through which is the most likely meaning right here right now. So those are the pop-up dictionaries and, and how they help with read-along videos when you need it. The last part you can stop now if you don't want to go for the big dictionary. Um, so this is where you might come, going back to the main one, let's say, oh, you want to query first. Okay, there we are. That's what it'll look like when you go to the web page. It's called mdbg.net, and it's a pretty great dictionary. You can type in words in, in Pinyin. You can type in words in characters or in English, and in all those ways it will come up with words for you. So let's try pumpkin again, like I had tested it out a minute ago. So nangua means pumpkin. Um, let's say you want to learn how to handwrite it. Now it's not going to come up here with a little brush. I'm looking for this kind of little brush. This is where you could handwrite your own entry to search too. So that can be handy. You're looking at a sign and you can figure out maybe how you might write it, but you don't know how it sounds and you don't know what it means yet, but you want to know. Um, so you can, I'll show you. I just clicked the handwriting. So let's say I've got the word for the first part of pumpkin. It's estimating over there on the right which character I might mean. So you can just keep kind of looking at that last look. I didn't have to write the whole thing and it already got nan, which is the one that I'm trying to get. So I'll finish it, but you don't even have to. So if you saw something in a uh, signage and you don't have the ability to use a photo to look up, I think Google has that now. I've never tried it, to be honest. You can go to this dictionary. You can hand write in an estimate of it. I don't even think you have to have the right stroke order. It says you have to pay attention to it. So you want to start upper left down towards lower right as a general principle. Uh, but I think it can kind of estimate it even if you're not quite on exact standard stroke order. So there's, there's the handwriting way to look it up. Let's say you want to look up from English to Chinese. Use caution with that because it's hard to get 
the exact meaning you want. Sometimes they'll list so many options, it's hard to know which one is used the way that you want. Um, so here we have all the entries that have pumpkin. A lot of times you'll see these dialect, different regions of China have different ways of phrasing things sometimes. So let's say I want to learn some Chinese handwriting. That's what I was starting on. You open up so that you can see each word or each character, I should say, at a time. And now it's an option here. That brush means you can have it show you stroke order and it'll show you how to handwrite that character. So if you want to have Chinese character handwriting that looks pretty standard, looks similar to the way Chinese people would expect the word to look, that can be really helpful and kind of fun. I think it's a nice thing to do if you have time. There are also ways you can search for other words that contain it. So there's other characters beside it in a word. And then this is where what characters have this part as part of one character. So let's say you see that thing within a character. So you see what I mean? There, it's a part of other characters. So that can be fun to look up to. Um, I think those are maybe the big things. Let's say, oh, here's one. Let's say somebody says a word, so you hear it and you can estimate what the pinyin sounds like, uh, but you're not sure what the characters would be or what it means. So you can just type in the letters without any tone marks and then go. Oh, it doesn't like it. Now that's uh, surprising. Oh, because it's looking for character components. I need to go back to the main dictionary page. Let's get there. That will help us. Oops, no. Oh, it has a lot of other features here. If you want to get to type in characters or type in pinion, it has options for that too. Let me find, I'm just going to go back to the original page. There we are. And now it's, it's, I don't even really have to change this. You'll see both simplified and traditional in your results anyway. Oh, one thing to note too about those pop-up dictionaries, they can handle both simplified script and traditional script. There's no need to worry about, huh, is that, which one is that? It can do both. It's fine. So what I was wanting to do was show like, oh, I could hear the word. I can estimate what the opinion is, but I don't know what it means or and I don't know how it looks. So that's another way you can look up words. And the only word that has nan and gua next to it in any tone pattern is the word nan gua, and it's pumpkin. So hopefully that is helpful. I will put the links to these three websites, the dictionary and the two pop-up options underneath this video window.